Welcome back to The Breakdown. I am De La Creme De La, your privileged host. This is the De La Creme De La channel. Uh, thank you so much for jo joining The Breakdown show today. If you're joining us on Patreon, then you know that you get early access to this episode of Breakdown. So thank you so much um, for taking that leap and joining Patreon. Uh, and you also know, if you join Patreon, that we've got that 24-7 chat room where we get to chop it up about the latest episodes and everything else that's going on. Um, if you have more questions about that, feel free to hit the link um, in the uh, in this channel's page, um, the Patreon link. Either way, welcome uh, to the breakdown. Uh, wanted to share some quick house rules with you, real quick. <laughs> Whether you are part of the breakdown crew um, or not, uh, the house rules still apply. Um, whether you are on Patreon or not, the house rules still apply. Uh, <laughs> so there are this. Listen, number one, this is not a no judgment zone. Okay. I say what I see and I see what I see. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I inspire us here in this breakdown zone to put on our thinking crown, straighten them out polish them up my daughter and i were watching some jewelry making videos we we love jewelry and i love to purchase um genuine gemstones and and precious metals and so i love to appreciate the process of making that jewelry i'm thinking about our thinking crowns here um so while we were watching um this video of this uh handmade um ring um, this kunzite ring, kunzite and diamond ring. Um, I was explaining to my daughter, you know, she was asking about the gold. And I was explaining to her, you know, I was like, do you notice that that gold looked like a regular old piece of metal at first? And then when he put the fire on it, all the sparkle came out. And of course, I, I took the opportunity to try to give her a little life lesson on how the fire okay, can bring out the brilliance. Um, but yeah, go ahead and, and run that thinking crown through a lighter, <laughs> through a torch, because I know you got one. Uh, and go ahead and sparkle up and straighten out that strength, that thinking crown um, so that we can get to work. Rule number two, this is not for kids. Um, I'm in a beautiful, fantastic, sunshiny mood, but I still cuss. <laughs> Another lesson I've taught my daughter is that words are language, simply. And the same word can mean something different in a different language set. I've seen it over and over again. And, um, you know, so cussing is just a language. That's it. It's just a language. But if it offends you, it's probably best that you don't continue to watch this. And if it offends your children or or you're offended by little ones hearing this language, yeah, nah. You know, and I'll be honest with you, it ain't that interesting to kids anyway. My daughter tells me all the time how boring my show is. Um, so this ain't for children, okay? Uh, you might want to skadoot and skedaddle them out of the room. Maybe put your headphones on or whatever. Uh, but I try to keep it cool. Anyway, rule number three, because this is a sensitive topic where we are talking about um, matters of race. Um, and I happen to identify in America as a black woman. Um, then since we're talking about a black woman um, and black people, for that matter, uh, if you are not black, then be very careful here. People people wonder oftentimes, like, what do you mean if you're not black? Because, you know, I showed you a picture of a guy the other day on the community tab who said he was offended as a black man um, by Tiffany Henry's behavior. And everybody in the world is looking at him like, her, you black? Uh, well, <laughs> black is a culture. It's not just a color, right? Um, just like white is an attitude. So let me ask you a quick question. I want to give you the, uh, the test. And I'm not going to tell you uh, who failed this test test most recently because then that would give you a clue on who to google okay but let's go ahead and let me give you a real quick test i want to know if i was to ask you this question how would you answer it god is good 
And I'm not going to say the second part, but if you do, then you know you can. Go ahead and say what needs to be said when it pertains to Tiffany Henyard being ghetto, okay? Possibly being a thought because all she seems to love is married men. You know, a, a whole bunch of things. She is literally a welfare queen, not as a recipient, but Thornton Township is a resource center for public assistance. So she's the queen of Thornton Township. Therefore, she literally is a welfare queen. Wow. How did that happen? Oh, Jesus. How the fuck did that happen? But anyway, just be careful. And I've seen it get a lot better across the the spaces I, across the platforms, across the creators, across the comments. I don't know where Angela Yee got all that bullshit for Tiffany Henry with those comments about her being a porch monkey. I, I, black people don't talk like that. So we know who that was. And uh, if those comments were out there, which I don't genuinely think they are, how come none of the other ones were read about the extortion and the lying and the stealing and the, you know, all the others. Um, but yeah, just be real careful. I haven't had to say this in a while, but we get new folks all the time in the breakdown crew. And if you're watching, whether it's in the bushes, in the live comments, in the comments or whatever, then you are part of the breakdown crew. So uh, we get a lot of new folks all the time and this channel is steadily growing. So I just want to make sure I put it out there and put a little emphasis on it. <laughs> That's what my diction teacher taught me. He said, you got to put the right syllable on the right emphasis. <laughs> Tiffany, you could use a couple diction um, sessions, a few, a few, baby. D I, not that dick. D I C T I O N. I would get so distracted in my diction class. It was, um, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me. I think I took the last diction class I took. Admittedly, was in the late nineties. Early 2000s, so I haven't studied anything diction-wise in a while. But because I read and because I speak, I do make sure that I focus on my emphasis. Uh, <laughs> but my last diction class, I was so distracted because I was just stuck on that word dick. Mm. I was just daydreaming about it in class. But anyway, uh, <laughs> shout-outs to the good old days. <laughs> But yeah, just make sure, you know, if you're in the chat and you're chatting, just be respectful to black people. Be mindful of the sensitivities in our culture and be careful with the words that you use. Just, you know, converse as you have been like like adults. I love that we've got people from different parts of the world um, and different cultures and different thoughts and mindsets and political backgrounds and educational backgrounds and experience and family styles and all kinds of folks in the Breakdown Crew. And when we get to chatting, it's beautiful. And it hasn't in a long time gotten disrespectful or dirty. And I love it. Keep it intellectual. I love it. That's what we're here for. Um, we got other chats we can go to and be ratchet. Um, and we can be ratchet here. Just don't be disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I just felt like I need to put a little extra oomph on that. And if it comes up again for me to say it again, I'll say it again. Shit. Uh, so those are the house rules. <laughs> I be tickling me. I have not had any coffee yet. I'm simply um, smoking a new strain and drinking some water. But anyway, it's not my favorite water, though, so it's a little bit more low vibrational. Um, I want to look at something today, y'all. And aside from this long-ass introduction, this probably will be the longest part of the show. Well, maybe. But I want to take a very close look at something, and then I really want to have a kind of little bonus conversation um, about some stuff. So... <sighs> I got six things on the agenda, and I've already covered two. <laughs> See, Tiffany? That's how you work through an agenda, bitch. Shit. But I put times on my agenda. I give myself a certain amount of time to be able to speak on my agenda. I literally, you've heard me say, okay, we're one minute ahead of schedule. I literally mark how long I'm allowing myself to cover something on my agenda because that's professional. Um, well, I learned that from being a teacher and I learned that from making broadcast, uh, news. So anyway, first guy I want to talk about today, first guy, and remember this is not a no judgment zone, but I got questions. Now, usually 
if I'm able to answer these questions without bringing it to the breakdown crew, then I will bring you the question and the answer. That's a great show, right? But one thing I learned a long time ago is when enough is enough. And so I learned around 2004 how to let things go. If I don't have enough information, if I don't have enough answers, if I can't put together some sort of reasonable conclusion, then let it be. Oftentimes that answer will reveal itself because the universe works for me. Okay. But sometimes it don't. Okay. So then I bring it to you, the breakdown crew. So we can look at it together and that's what we going to do. <laughs> So enough intrigue. Um, let's get to it. The first thing I want to look at, we're going to kind of work backwards. We're looking at the regular board meeting from the village of Dalton, April 1st, 2024. Yes, we are still looking at this video. We are still, you know what? Carlton uh, broke Carlton from Go Political, uh, unlocked um, uh, a cheat code in me. He unlocked something in me the other day when he spoke about something and so um i said okay well then let's do it um i have been really really going across this video from different platforms not this video this meeting from different platforms and different speeds looking at different things okay because there's well, there was a lot going on monday night okay and so i decided to watch the video backwards yeah, because sometimes that's what the fuck you got to do. So I went to this video, the regular board meeting from April 1st, 2024. It is in the breakdown playlist currently. Okay. And I took a look at it from the end. The video is one hour, one hour. One hour. I'm about to talk like Stan Brown. One hour, 41 minutes, and 13 seconds. I need to put some glasses on. Um, and at the very end, I noticed something peculiar. Excuse me. My mother, excuse me. My mother told me when I was a little girl that I was a very particular person. She said, you know, you have this way about you that you look at things in a different way than other people. You kind of turn your brain to the side. And that's how I find things when I've lost them. I actually look at things and separate the layers of whatever's in the fucking room. Separate the satin from the wood. You know what I'm saying? And just try to find what I'm looking for. But I've also learned how to use Apple tags. <laughs> so that makes life easier. But when my mother told me that, I, I, I took it. I received that. And I allowed that to turn into a gift. I don't know what the, what the gift of the gift is. But today, we about to use that. And we about to use our internet tools. Um, let's take a look at some interesting things. Let's start with the very end of the video. I'm going to go to the one hour, 41 minute and two second timestamp. Now, we know a lot has already happened here. And we'll go back and talk about what has happened. I promise. In this conversation, we will. Because I know, I know, I know what you're saying. I hear you. But I want to go to right here. Now. The guy I want us to pay close attention to is this gentleman picking up his free water. Okay. He was like, uh, Dalton water got rocks in it coming out the faucet. I done heard it. That's how I got started looking at this Dalton shit. Uh, excuse me. I actually got, I started learning about Tiffany Henyard because, um, the Dalton trustees board meeting, one of their board meetings popped up on my uh, recommendations and I watched it. I was like, okay, let's see what's popping. You know, you can always learn a little bit more about what's going on everywhere. Well, as the, um, this was a special board meeting where uh, trustee Jason uh, House was pro tem, mayor pro tem. Um, 
I believe this was the meeting where Trusty Allison Key had on all off white and it was heavenly. Oh, she looked so pretty. Oh, I loved it. I was just a stuck on her ensemble. It was gorgeous. But anyway, um, the citizens got up and started speaking about, you know, one spoke about an issue with the water. And the water being nasty and her not being able to drink it because there were rocks coming out her faucet. And then another one later on got up and spoke about something similar. And somebody else spoke about and asked, is the water being tested? When was the last time the water was tested? And so that's, you know, where I went. And if you go and look at the breakdown playlist or look at my videos, you'll see that the very first thing I ever posted was a short where I asked what's happening with the water in Dalton, Illinois. And nobody, uh, it didn't, you know, nobody watched that video, you know, at the time. It wasn't, you know, YouTube has a way. YouTube wants you to stay on one topic, and I just refuse to. So I, for the sacrifice of views, I cover what needs to be covered. So it didn't get a lot of traction, but I kept paying attention. And um, <clears throat> I learned when I was studying broadcast um, how to allow the story to answer the questions. So, the very first inkling I ever had that something was wrong in Dalton had to do with this water. And you see, there's always a whole bunch of water. I think in one meeting, we counted 24 water bottles for 15 people. Stan left his water. Uh, Lacey left his water. Pete left his. Kim left hers. Uh, somehow, Delgado and Tiffany both get the good water, the artesian water. But they left theirs. Um, that what Keith took his. I know that's right. Because uh, he don't know how long this drive going to last. And um, who was sitting right here? Not a lot of people came. I think that might have just been Juanita. And then some random water. And then Stacy took his. But anyway, let's take a look at Stacy. Okay. Now, I've had a lot to say about him. He's made it to some thumbnails. Um, he is, let me just give you some background on Stacy. I said this would be a short video, but who knows? Stacy is the superintendent of Dalton. What is a superintendent? Well, I think about it in terms of New York um, housing. And, and, and the first time I ever heard of a superintendent was called a super. It was a person they would call a super in um, in apartment buildings in New York City. I think they call them tenements. And the super was the person who would fix shit, but hardly ever did shit. Just collected a check. Usually wasn't that well skilled. Slept on the clock quite a bit. Didn't get things done in a timely manner. Or could have been the complete opposite. On top of shit. Kept things under code. Um, stayed ahead of the game, listened to the tenants when they spoke about what was wrong, kept the cost low by keeping things efficient, made sure things were good. So there was supers, right? Well, here's a superintendent, and he's the superintendent of the public works department. Public works does not put up Christmas trees or Christmas lights or banners of the mayor, believe it or not, even though that's what Tiffany Henyard wants to use their budget for. Public works make sure, you know, the water main breaks that always happen, the roads, the alleys, the trees, the guy stuff. <laughs> I call it the husband stuff. But any man I marry would be smart enough to outsource that shit because we keep our hands clean. Um, but Tracy, Stacy, dang, my sister must be talking about me. Stacy manages on paper the public works department. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the public works department. And then I'm going to tell you who Stacy really is from my speculation. I don't have to say allegedly because I said I'm speculating. Okay? Tasha K. Take a lesson out of my book. So, the public works department is the people who are supposed to be doing lawns, cutting trees, fixing streets, doing all that shit. Now, they happen to outsource everything, which doesn't make any sense to me. The only thing that tells me is that the public works department isn't skilled enough to actually do the works of this city. Well, then what the fuck do they actually do? I think they sell drugs in the community. I sure do. And I think the companies that do a lot of the outsourcing provide those drugs because those costs turn out to be very high for not a whole lot of work. 
$10,000 to cut whose lawns? $10,000 for lawns? They don't even have, I think they have 20,000 residents. And I forget how many homes are actually in Dalton. I did the work on Thornton, but I haven't done the work just Dalton. But they don't really have enough old elderly people with lawns who fit the income criteria, okay? Because you have to submit income paperwork to get your lawn cut in Dalton by Dalton, by the village of Dalton. It's a public assistance program. Um, so, you know, uh, I believe that the people who are providing some of these services, like the tree cutting services and the lawn care services in particular, are providing drugs to um, Stacy. Under the watchful eye of Tiffany Henyard, of course, Madam Tiffany Henyard. And I believe that Stacy is corralling those um, drug dealers in the public works department. And I'm going to tell you why I, I think it's coming out of public works. They always talk about the second chance program, but where they at? Where is it? Where is it? Where is the public works department? We don't see the second chance boys at all. And the second chance, um, I, 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 I Freudian slipped and said, where's the public works department? I meant, where is the second chance program? But what I meant to say, what I was actually saying is the second chance program, which is a program that Tiffany Henyard quote unquote created with big air quotes to uh, give felons, thieves, Gypsies, tramps, scallywags, low life people, people who like to scam, people who like to steal, people who like to break in cars, people who refuse to get educated um, or get some kind of vocational education, people who refuse to pull themselves up, people who refuse to manage um, their own finances and live within their means, people who want what other people have but aren't willing to work for it, um, who have been caught by the government doing things um, that people do when they behave in those ways or demonstrate those mindsets, um, those people are in the Second Chance program. Give me a second. Mimi, Nishira and Jean, Nishira, how does she share? She got something going on in there. It's exciting. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So the second chance program is who staffs public works. How do I know? Because when Tiffany Henyard hired that sex offender who was uh, participated in a couple gang rapes in Chicago, who she was also sleeping with, um, they everybody was like, "Why didn't you just put him in the public works department?" Okay. Well, anyway, I believe that. The companies are actually fun are actually uh, providing drugs for Stacy under the watchful eye of Tiffany Henyard, and there are people under Stacy who do the work to flip the flips and do the flops and do the things that go down to Public Works, and Public Works actually sells the drugs. Because when's the last time you saw somebody from Public Works in a random Tiffany Henyard video? Because there's so many. They don't do nothing. They outsource everything. They outsource trees, lawns, concrete, water main breaks, road repairs, alley repairs. They outsource everything. I don't know what the fuck these public works staff do. Okay? So, the reason why I'm talking about Stacy and the water is because we're going to watch... What Stacy does. Let's go. What? What? What did that nigga just do? Did y'all see what that nigga just did? Now, now raise your hand if you saw him do that before you watched this video. Because I know this breakdown crew is accurate, keen, astute. It's not a shame if you didn't. I just want to know. Let me know in the chat if you saw this before. 
Because I be pointing out stuff and then y'all be in the comments like, yeah, I knew you was going to see that. So let me ask you, did you see this? Let's take another look at it. Oh, we're going to talk about that hurry up too. I'm going to keep my, my little thing right here. Now, I thought that Stacy's job, Stacy Carell, FBI, S T A C E Y C A R R E L. He is the superintendent of the Public Works Department. I'm sure you already know who he is. I'm sure he's under your electronic and physical surveillance. Why? If I was leaving, okay, so I've been a manager in my in my corporate life. That's my corporate role, manager. It's the job I love to hate. Um, <laughs> it's gone by many names. It's gone by team leader. It's gone by team lead. It's been manager. It's been supervisor. It's been all kinds of different names. At the end of the day, I've been in a role where I managed several people and teams. If I left a meeting in a panic and the lead person, let's just call her the CEO, left the meeting in a panic, I, I don't know if I would feel the responsibility to clean up their desk to close their folders. Now, public works, I could see maybe putting the mic back, tapping the mics to make sure they're off, which is what he did. Okay? But I wonder why he knew. How did you know, Stacy, to clean up her desk? And... Could you please remove that hand sanitizer that ain't nobody using? How did you know to do that? You were the only person. You didn't bump into anybody on the way over there. You didn't say to anybody, don't worry about it, I got it. How did you know, Stacy? Because that's not normal behavior. I know that you and Tiffany Henyard, she adores you. She said that when she first became mayor. And you guys make music videos together. She probably, you know, talked to you and to do some weird shit in one of them new vehicles. In one of them Fiats. Um, hmm. And why is her chair higher than everybody else? <laughs> God damn, Tiffany Henyard, you have a complex. You got the attorney with one chair. Like, chairs mean everything. I've learned this when I was younger. Like, when you set up a room for other people to be in, the chairs mean everything. People pay such subtle attention to that shit subconsciously. And you can definitely see what's popping here. She probably gave Keith that chair because he's wide. <laughs> Keith is shaped like a butter bean. So it's quite possible that she gave him that chair because he needed a little bit more support on his hips. But why is her chair so high? Damn, Tiffany, you got problems, honey. That says a lot. But let's get to the meat. He's the only one that did it. He's the only one that did it. He's the only one who did it. How did he know to do it, though? What conversation made that part of the plan? He was just doing a favor for a friend? 
maybe. But that's a friend in a professional capacity right now. And there's a safety risk, right? Because when Tiffany Henyard left, we're going to number four on my agenda. <laughs> We are smoothly transitioning from number three into number four. See how you do that, Tiffany and you? Lord. Um, hold on. Let me get to the good part. Go on with it just because it's traction for your so network. That's when not Tiffany cool. Henry left, I said before, let me give a retraction from my previous breakdown episode. Not the one with the monkeys. And shout out to y'all for being so sweet. Thank you for not being mad at me for that video. Like, I literally have been sitting on that video for a couple weeks. And all I could think about was the village of Dalton. And because I'm black, I knew I wouldn't get the backlash of calling them monkeys. Because they are. They over there doing some fucking monkey shit. God damn it. Stupid ass shit. And... <laughs> And I really had to find a way to package that monkey video in a way uh, that I could correlate it to the village of Dalton because that's what's popping. And um, the timing just happened to be right. So thank you so much for not being mad at me. Thank you for enjoying the, the sounds of the hummingbirds and the monkeys and the leaves and the sunshine and the people and the children. Um, I hope, I know you heard the little under, the little racial undertones that white man had when he said to his son, so you say all monkeys look alike, man, shut up. We see you. Some people just can't get in a space without being racist. God damn. But I live in Arizona. What's new? So anyway, um, <laughs> thank you guys for, for allowing me to, to put that oxygen into the atmosphere. Um, and, and being so so sweet and going with the flow. Because we needed, you know, yesterday was going to be a day where I knew it was going to be a lot of fun in, at Stacy's house. We were we were all going over to Stacy's house to Uncle, I mean, Uncle Stacy, not Stacy. I still got Stacy on the brain. Um, we were all going over to Uncle Shay's house with the LNC crew. And we were going to have some fun over there. And I knew it. So I didn't want us to have a very serious um, breakdown episode yesterday. I just wanted it to be real chill and real cool. Um, so we'd be in the right vibe for what was to come, which was an amazing live. Um, uh, the late night crew was amazing last night. Um, I left, did some work to prepare for this video and came back and they were still rocking and I loved it. And a lot of what we covered today is going to be from that video Shout out to Shay and the Late Night crew. Um, so we talked about Stacy and the cleanup, right? Now, Tiffany, catch this. Watch me work. So we noticed at the very end that there were some interesting things that we heard in the background, right? Lacey is giving his report. About to lie real hard on Pablo's, a.k.a. Pablo's. Um... And why do I call it Pablo's? Well, because I see I watch other platforms. Not all YouTube creators do. Some people stay in their own space and only watch their own shit. But I love other YouTubers. Like especially when we're all talking about when we're talking about the same topic because you gather so much insight and perspective from other people. Um, if you only look at things from your own perspective, then you'll you know, be in a glass house. Uh, but let, I, I'm not going to try to find the moment when I, when, when it, when it was introduced by the late night crew, that Tiffany here was saying Pablo's instead of Pablo's, but that's what was happening this whole fucking time. She was mispronouncing the name of that poor company. Um, but I want to take a look a little bit further past that. That's not cool. Let's look at Lacey. Uh, state citations. And more than looking right now, we're going to listen because in the background, you know, I, I love my family in Chicago. I love the way they talk. They have a different um, dialect. And when I was overseas teaching English, I was explaining that in America, we have several different dialects. Everybody don't talk like the TV show Friends. Okay. Um, so... I don't know if y'all can hear my baby singing in the background. She practicing her vibrato. <laughs> she be getting it. Um, she got such a heavy voice. I love it. I had a heavy voice when I was a little girl, too. And my mama taught me how to embrace it. So here I am. Now, let's listen very closely. We're going to hear Tiffany in the background. You would... 
I thought it was Kim. Here's my retraction. I thought Kim said, hurry up. Because they all sound like they smoke too much. Like, they all got that ashtray sound, right? Um, and so, I only learned a couple days ago that that was actually Tiffany Henyard saying, hurry up, in the back. Hurry up! So, let's listen. 457 uh, red lights. We had six... Remember, we're working backwards, okay? 93 misdemeanors. Uh, our auto theft is down. We are also moving in the direction of a tactical unit. Did you see Pete? I just noticed that he said auto theft is down. Pete was like, eh, maybe. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but unfortunately, I don't think that this is going to uh, get to the people to see because I see the media oh, that they had. They were able to open up again. Right after they opened up, they had apartment. We're moving in the right direction. And what we're going to do. Listen closely. Officers, we're gonna we're gonna shut it down, ladies and gentlemen. For right now, for safety reasons, we are shutting the meeting down. So we heard Tiffany Henyard yell and say, "Hurry up!" Right? I like to pay attention to where the people are going. William Moore is actually there, but he's confused as fuck, just like a penis. Fucking not that whole nigga, the other one. Um. I still don't know which way they went out because they all walked around in circles for a few minutes before the cameras cut and Stacy started cleaning. Officers, we're gonna we're gonna shut it down. But let's look Ladies it. and gentlemen, for right now, for safety reasons, we are shutting the meeting down. That would be Tiffany Henry. And look at how dumb Stan is. He don't know what to do. Uh, Stan know what happened though. And I asked the question in our last breakdown episode. What made, why, why, what, what happened? Like, what the fuck happened? One minute, uh, Tiffany is talking about Plablos, and then she gives the mic to Chief Lacey, and then we hear her say, hurry up, and everybody's rushing out the door, and Stacy is cleaning her desk. He called it a safety risk, but Stacy stayed to clean the desk and cook the books. Well, I believe I've been asking for the answer. I still haven't gotten any validation or verification of the answer, but at least we got an answer. We may never actually have the actual validation because of the way the cameras are in this room right now. The cameras are facing forward. All the media that gave us live presentation left. They all left with the people shouting outside. Nobody stayed after to catch what happened in the room. But if we had, if anybody had stayed after to catch what was happening in the room, then maybe they would have caught the validation, the verification of the answer. But to get the answer, I want to go to the next video in the breakdown playlist, which is from the Real Late Night Crew. It is the Village of Dalton Party and Call In Late Night Crew, episode 135. That was last night. Okay. During that live, I found out that Dr. Nikki Nietzsche Cloud gave an interview. So I doubled back. Okay. Because I hang on every word she says. I doubled back to her interview. And I was able to hear her give an answer of, of a lot of information. We're going to look as a bonus to this episode, we're going to look at her whole interview together. Um, and there's really no need to break it down. I just want us to, I wanted to bring it to you so that you could see it. Um, but I want us to listen to her explanation of what made Tiffany Henyard from the back yell, hurry up and made P Pete McCain tap Lacey on the shoulder and then Lacey say, we're going to shut it down to the police like the meeting wasn't already over. Um, let's take a look real quick. And for the record, we are at <clears throat> agenda item number five of six. Uh, Tiffany, it can be done. You fit in. All right. So we see here Dr. Nikki Michi Cloud. She gave a really amazing interview. She always shares information about what's going on like she has so much she knows so much oh my god it's crazy um the information she has um but i want to go to a certain part of her interview 
where and for fair use purposes i am going to show the live chat as well um so i want to go to a certain part of her interview give me one second it would be we're gonna watch from here <laughs> And you can see from her face, she about to spill some tizzy. It's about to be some tea. This one, if you can answer this, is there any way possible you can speak on what happened after the adjourning of the meeting that happened on yeah, I, Monday? I, I can see that. All right. And um, I got a good feeling the young lady is on your chat, but I'm going to tell you, this is what happened. The young lady walked in, and I they, she had on a mask, she had on a hat, so they did not um, notice her. And she stood up there with the media <laughs> the entire time. So when all of the media turned and left, she walked and sat down. Because remember, they said, if you're going to leave, leave. Or if you're going to stay, have a seat. She sat down. So Tiffany go talk her little gibberish. Looking at contact with the media, you know, hear my cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I almost said her name. See my seat rope. Baby girl, pull that mask down. <laughs> <laughs> Game over. Oh, she pulled that mask down on her, hit her with that yeah, yeah. And um, Tiffany got up. And she ran. So if you go back and you listen to the, the last two minutes of the video, you hear her tell a key, hurry up, hurry <laughs> up, right? <laughs> because I stand on I stand on what I'm saying. That girl is not to be played with. Wait until she's ready to come forward. And I'm and I'm a, i am and i am I wanna clear this up for her as well. People always say, Why did it take so long for her to come out? It was not her. Have you figured out by now who the young lady is that she's speaking about? If you have, let's listen again. If you have figured out who the young lady is that she's talking about, um, you can put it in the chat. I would love it if you do. Um, but now that that's in perspective... I'm not going to say who she's talking about just yet. Shut up. Uh, this is my commentary. Uh, <laughs> don't rush me. Please. Please don't do that. Um, let's go here. And maybe there'll be a clue here. Position. Yep. <laughs> yep. I, I'm, I'll get you out of here on this one. If you can answer this. Is there any way possible you can speak on what happened after the adjourning of the meeting? That happened on yeah, I, Monday. I, I can see that. All right. And um, I got a good feeling the young lady is on your chat, but I'm going to tell you this is what happened. The young lady walked in, and I they, she had on a mask, she had on a hat, so they did not um, notice her. And she stood up there with the media <laughs> the entire time. So when now the young lady, I just want to work this slow because I don't like to I don't like to rush people into coming to conclusions. I don't think it's fair. Um, I'm skilled and educated enough to take a slow walk with you. If you don't know who the young lady is, because we all don't know. I mean, just imagine how many people come to this story every day, right? So let's talk about the young lady. If you've been following any of this situation, who is the one trustee that wasn't in the room Monday night? Now, I ain't say he wasn't in the building because apparently he was in the basement just like a freaky perverted uncle. But Andrew Holmes was not in the room on Monday. Why? Exactly. That's why. Exactly. Now, who is the one person who could make all that true? All the accusation about what happened in Las Vegas and the drugging and, you know, going to the mayor about it and the mayor saying, I'll take care of it, but it could ruin me. 
Who is the one person that could validate all of that? The young lady. Exactly. 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 Now let's listen one more time. This one. If you can answer this, is there any way possible you can speak on what happened after the adjourning of the meeting that happened on yeah, I, Monday? I, I can speak on it. All right. And um, I got a good feeling the young lady is on your chat, but I'm going to tell you this is what happened. The young lady walked in and I they, she had on a mask, she had on a hat, so they did not um, notice her. And she stood up there with the media. <laughs> The entire time. So when all of the media turned and left, she walked and sat down. Because remember, they said, if you're going to leave, leave. Or if you're going to stay, have a seat. She sat down. So Tiffany goes, talk her little gibberish, looking at contact with the media, you know, hear my cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I almost said her name. See my seat roll. Baby girl. Pull that mask down. <laughs> <laughs> Game over. Oh. She pulled that mask down on her, hit her with that yeah, yeah. And um, Tiffany got up and she ran. So if you go back and you listen to the, the last two minutes of the video, you hear her tell a key, hurry up, hurry <laughs> up, right? <laughs> Because I stand on I stand on what I'm saying. That girl is not to be played with. Wait until she's ready to come forward. And I'm and I'm a, I want to clear this up for her as well. People are always saying, and "Why did it take back. so long?" For we her? are definitely going to listen to this interview in its entirety as a bonus to this episode. Uh, but I do want to now put it in perspective. So the question was asked amongst a whole bunch of us: What was it that made Tiffany Henyard leave so abruptly at the end of the meeting? The young lady. It was the young lady. The young lady that accused Andrew Holmes of sexual assault was in the room. And according to Dr. Nikki Cloud, she came in with the media, which is some shit I would have done, media or not, I'm coming in there. Okay, I'll be whoever I need to be today. I've got my phone in vertical, okay? <laughs> Not horizontal like a tourist. I look like I'm taking some quick information down. Um, shit. Uh, I, I walk with a cane in places just to make sure I can get the best access. Because you never know if you need it. Um, so she walked in, stood back there with the media. Now I have scanned the uh, people who were with the media on both sides. Um... If we're talking about the person who I think we're talking about, I was not able to verify that that person was there. But I was able to verify someone was there. Um, but that one person wasn't the person who I'm thinking about. So now I'm a little throwed off. Because I went back to look at some old videos to make sure that I was thinking about the right person. And I was thinking about the right person. But that wasn't the person I was able to verify was there. So anyway, that leaves more, more to be answered. But thank you so much, Dr. Nikki, for that information. I want to go back now and watch the Village of Dalton meeting. Um, come on, YouTube. Uh, hold on. to come out it was not her people don't understand all right i want to come back i want to come back now and i want to um go back to give me a second the village of dalton meeting that we were watching maybe i was already there there we go and i want to just listen to those last couple minutes again now to put it in perspective um what happened based on what Dr. Cloud let us know. Oh, they did put the chat back up. When I when I reviewed when I um did our breakdown of this video last earlier this week, um the chat was gone, but that might have been a YouTube thing. 
Then why is the last comment Tiffany looks like Lil Wayne? I mean, we're moving in the right direction in what we're going to do. Officers, we're going we're gonna to shut it down. Ladies and gentlemen, for right now, for safety reasons, we are shutting the meeting down. Why did she need them to leave in order for her to leave? Why couldn't she just get in her um, taxpayer paid for um, Tahoe and leave? Hmm. Why did she need all of them to leave? Oh, because she didn't want them to see her. She didn't want her, them to see her. Okay. Thank you. Officers, we're going we're gonna to shut it down. Ladies and gentlemen, for right now, for safety reasons, we are shutting the meeting down. And I'm the type of bitch, I was looking at Stacy's belt buckle looking for a damn reflection. You hear me? I was looking at his tie pin. I zoomed in on that bitch as good as I could to see if I could see a reflection of the crowd, honey. Hurry up. Hurry up. Now, Stan went toward the audience. So I wonder what Stan knows. And ain't nobody got paid. Now I was able to answer a couple questions since our last conversation. So apparently the lady in the checker coat right here with the half a hairstyle, she does come. I've looked at several meetings. She comes in from the exit a lot, like a lot, like meeting after meeting after meeting, she comes in from the exit, okay? And she comes in right after people have already started sitting down, and um, then she just takes a seat. I've never seen the guy before, though. But um, what uh, Miss Cara Wilson let me know in the chat last night on um, the Real Late like the Real Late Night Cruise channel was that she comes with the aunt. I don't know what aunt, but she comes with the aunt. So, I don't know what the what the what the fucking tea is. Um. Anyway, that was what I had for that. Uh, I I probably made you ask more questions than I gave you answers, but that's part of our job here at the Breakdown Two Crew Two is to brush the dust off. So, you know, the questions can be revealed. So um, there was a lot happening at one time. We all have busy lives, so we don't all get to stop and watch and look and zoom into all the things. So I wanted us to do that together. Now, as a bonus, as I promised, I want to go back and I want to take a look at Dr. Nikki Nietzsche Cloud's interview on um, the Real Late Night Crew. Give me one moment, please. There we go. There it is. All right, I want to take a look at her interview, and I just want to give you an opportunity because she says a lot. There's a lot. There's, oh, my God, so much, so much information here. Uh, but I want us to have a chance to take a look at it together. So let's go. People don't understand. She... Timestamp. I got long nails, so I be fucking up. Here we go. Is that it? Yep, yeah, I guess so. Tiffany Hanyard. Who is our first guest? Here we go. Our first guest is the one and only. Former Chief of Staff to Mayor Tiffany Hanyard. If I can find where it's hidden. Oh, that's not it. This is it. Dr. Nikita Cloud is in the building, y'all. So let me get her volume straight so y'all can hear her. Oh, no, y'all should be able to hear her now. Can you hear me, Dr. Cloud? 
Yep, I can hear you loud and clear. How are you? I'm amazing. How are you this afternoon, early evening? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good, actually. I'm going to support some friends at a um, concert tonight. Oh, in, okay. In Naperville. Naperville. Yeah. Uh, I, I know somebody in Naperville. But that's another story for another day. Um, <laughs> Dr. Cloud, would you be so kind as to just introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about yourself and how you fit into the Dalton narrative a little bit? Absolutely. So I am Dr. Nikita Nietzsche Cloud, and I am a 17-year um, public relations professional. So I own a company, High Society Public Relations, which is also a full-service communication firm. So whether it's media training, public relations, communications, et cetera, um, that's what I do. The list goes on and on. So basically how I got involved with the village of Dalton is I was brought in and interested enough, you're interviewing Cara tomorrow. <clears throat> it was regarding the Cara, um, you know, her daughter, Alexis Wilson, who was very, very, very brutally shot and killed by um a Dalton police officer. So um, they had a protest at her house and Tiffany had just became mayor a few months, you know, prior or whatever. Uh, and Tiffany came to me and the way she presented the story to me was, you know, I was told to say something, you know, et cetera. And she said it. And next thing you know, it turned out to sort of, you know, and that was on me. I said that I learned the lesson I learned from that is to thoroughly vet. And it just, it was a mess from there, just being real with you. Well, uh, before I ask you about Mayor Henry, because we definitely want to hear you about Mayor Henry, I want to know mm -hmm. your thoughts, if you can give any, on trustee Andrew Holmes and the Las Vegas situation. Andrew Holmes, here, here's the crazy part. In full transparency, I used to think Andrew was cool. Right. Because Andrew is the one and I'm, I mean, bro, I should have sent you these messages. Andrew used to, you know, tell me not to trust Tiffany. Andrew helped pass literature for the recall. What? So that's my thing. So to see that they're besties, when I quit Andrew Holmes, was the first person to call me. Yeah, so as far, but aside from all of that, I had a lot of respect for him. But not only like I know Andrew, I know the young lady in question. And I had a conversation with the lady in question. I believe the young lady in question. So to me, Andrew went from someone that, much like this young lady said, she called him Uncle Drew, I looked at him like, you know, he was cool, but nah, slime ball, because I looked this young lady in the face. She had no reason to lie. And I asked her certain questions three and four different times, and she answered the exact same way. It's the consistency in her story. And remember, I told you, when it comes to, you know, I made a bad judgment getting in this mess with Tiffany. So you know I wasn't going to miss twice. Everything she said, she she's not lying. And that's the thing. I, I would put my paycheck behind that. Like, she's not lying. Now, this is where it gets interesting. She shouldn't even have been at the conference to begin with in Vegas. Neither should Andrew, if we're being technical. Now, before she transitions into that, I do want to just make mention of one quick thing that she said, just so it doesn't go over our heads. Andrew told her not to trust Tiffany. And he supported the recall. He passed out literature to support the recall. I told y'all Andrew worked for the FBI, let's continue. And that's where it's like you put this young lady in harm's way in a place she shouldn't even have been. And if we really being honest, Tiffany shouldn't have been at the conference in the capacity in which she was in because it's an economic development conference. And I tell people to pay attention. It's an economic development conference. 
Thornton Township, for all intents and purposes, is a resource center for public assistance. They don't handle economic development. Economic development is bringing stores to your community. Economic development is bringing different businesses. It's basically, think going to like, you know, the expo Mm -hmm. and different or career fair, right? That's what this is. So you have all these different, you know, Whole Foods, McDonald's. Um, Chick-fil-A, et cetera, right? They're all there, and then you go up to them, up to their booth, and you kind of try to make a deal. That's what that is. So you explain to me why are township employees who spent almost $70,000 at an economic development conference, then you take trustees from the township who should have been there with Kiana, trustee Kiana Belcher, or trustee Holmes. Because at the time, trustee, um, not home, trustee house. house. At the time, Jason House was the economic chair. Okay. So it would have made sense for someone for finance. Even Keith Freeman, if he would have gone as the village manager, he would have even been authorized to be there. But they went as the township. And then you take your detail? <laughs> Stupid. But I'm happy the detail went this time. Because had he not gone, and I hate that he's catching such a bad rap, but he's really the hero in this entire situation. Because if it wasn't for him following police protocol and recording what a dude did, we wouldn't even have the evidence that's out here today. Well, do we know the official reason that the alleged victim was uh, was fired? Did she ever get a real reason? No. So um, things I can say, it's really her story to tell, but things I can say um, is Tiffany put her on FMLA, right? She put her on FMLA saying she, so she can sort everything out because quite naturally once she, you know, discovered what had happened to her, she was freaking out, right? So Tiffany put her on FMLA. She did not ask to be on FMLA according to the victim. However, next thing you know, Victim wants some justice. The victim want to know what's going on. Tiffany got her out here hanging. And she's a solid young lady. This is not, this isn't one of those, you know, she, she's solid. You know, she's down to earth. You can have a conversation with her just like you and I are having a conversation. She's a good girl. She's beautiful. And um, next thing you know, she started asking questions. And unfortunately, it looked like she was asking too many questions from what I was told. And next thing you know, she's she's gone. Yikes. Uh. Well, I guess um, why why will the why how come the news won't mention Andrew Holmes? Why why are they? It seems I don't want to say they're afraid, but it just feels that way. Mm-mm. No, the. I want to call your attention back because this is really important. Um, Dr. Cloud was graceful enough to explain this to me in the comments, and I really, really appreciate her walking me through this information because I was like, why is he being protected by the news? It doesn't make sense. So I was really grateful to her for explaining this, but she goes on to even explain it even further here um, as to why Andrew Holmes' name is not being mentioned by the news, why he continues to be called the unnamed trustee. Uh, But before she does, I just want to um, just make note of one thing she said that caught my attention for us. uh, Public assistance is not economic development. (laughs) Let's go. The reason why is because uh, it's the way the report was filed. Right. Okay. So it, this is the way it was explained to me by because I, I asked the same question. In the report, the victim is listed, which is stupid. And shout out to Lori Lightfoot as well as Clerk Martinez because they're actually were in the process of advocating for a law, a bill to be passed to blind, you know, the names, redact the names of the, you know, alleged alleged victims in, in matters as such. But right now, when you go to the Illinois Department of Human Rights and places like that, because she's the one who made the complaint, mm. her name is public information, which is unfortunate because she's a victim. But because he's the accused, until actual charges are filed, he's still considered innocent until proven guilty. Okay. And that's consistent between Illinois and Las Vegas. Okay, that make that makes much more sense. Explain to me that I way. I also want to uh, point out the fact that Las Vegas 
has a penalty of sexual assault where this allegedly happened at, you can get life in prison. So you know they're going to cross every T. They're going to dot every I. So due to the nature of this case, they have to be 100% sure. Okay. All right. Well, if that's the case, then that, that makes all the sense in the world. Um, can you can you break down just in shortly? Can you break down the mayor's pay between her two positions? Because you're the one who knows it so well. Yeah. So um, in in the village of Dalton, she gets I want to say it was sixty thousand. Don't quote me. It's, she gets a smaller amount. We'll say that. But she's also the liquor commissioner in the village of Dalton. So she get another, you know, 20, 30. So she's looking at about 80 from the village of Dalton. Then she gets to 25, 250 at um, Thornton Township as the supervisor. But she also gets an expense account. So that's putting her, you know, she's well over 300,000. She can be honestly close, you know, touching on four. Because you also have to consider the fact that she gets a uh, a per dim. So when she travels, she gets six hundred dollars a day on top of everything that she gets. So, which is crazy because that's when it comes to like black math, right? Because she has more than enough money to pay for all of her own stuff. She has more than enough money to pay her own car note. She has more than enough money to hire her own detail. She actually has an expense account that can do all of that. But instead, she puts that part aside, and then she still uses the taxpayer. Well, all of it is the taxpayer money, but she used you know, money that's not allocated for that, for that. And it's, and it's, it's sad. It's unfortunate to the people because you got to still think about it. And I know that it's a lot of conflict. A lot of people say the people of Dalton make 24000 a year. That's not necessarily true. It, but it does go based off of the census. So it, the lesson to be learned here is you got some good people in Dalton. You got business owners in Dalton. You got doctors. You got attorneys. You got, you got good people in Dalton. But if you're not answering the door, to do the actual consensus when they're knocking at the door and the only ones that are knocking at the door are the ones making 24 and 36,000 a year, you're going to look like the entire community is that because you got to do the law of averages based off of who answers the door. <laughs> you got to look at it like this. Look at, think, think of Kiana Belcher, right? Highly okay. intelligent. Think Tammy Brown. Highly, these women driving luxury vehicles, these women, they're, and they're not, you know, like, these are just two. I just, you know, Brittany Norwood. She's another. She's a whole real estate investor. Badass, right? And then you got, um, um, and then just let's be honest, slumlord or not, Tiffany own real estate. You know what I'm saying? Like, so these women are not. They're, 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 you know, for for what is, you know, as far as they're well-to-do women, and it's not just them. It's many. Look at, look at Miss Stubbs. Did you see her building that she owns? That's not a two flat. <laughs> you know no, it's not. <laughs> it is not. So, you know, um, uh, Mary Yvonne, you know, the, she's an ex, you know, law enforcement pro. Like, I, the list goes on and on and on of the people who are in Dalton. Like, these people are doing Jason House. Come on out. You know, like, those, I mean, he was a bank banker, you know. So, the people are there. It's just, you know, it's packaged bad. And it looks bad. But... Those people, it, Dalton is like Mayberry. Like, I hate that we have such a bad rap. We really, really do. <laughs> well, I have to ask you, because you're the only person who could probably answer this question that I've been wanting to know forever. Does Tiffany mm -hmm. ever listen to anyone around her? I, 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 can, I know no. she don't all the time. Does she ever? No. See, and that's the thing. So I, I, I say a lot that this is how I explain it. She listened to two people, and both of them are men. She's not a girl's girl, and I know that sounds crazy. So imagine she bringing me along. She liked me because I present well, you know, like, hey, girl, you know. And, and aside from politics, Tiffany is cool. Politics, like, if we were just sitting back, she could be on this show. You would have a blast with Tiffany. But when it comes to handling business, Tiffany is just not that person. And when it comes to it, and then she got that grimy side to her. She would definitely be that girl, like, you know, man, I ain't going to trust Tiffany scamming ass, but I'll <laughs> hang out with her. You know what I'm saying? She's like that chick, right? Because she'll get you if you let her. You know yep. what I'm saying? But on the flip side, it's like, it's, it's the way she handled business and her mentality. Everything is get money, get money.
money, get money. A lot of people are saying that she's, uh, who they call her, Lua? No, she Tasha from Power. Men mentally, she believes that she's Tasha from Power. And she, and I, listen, Tasha from Power. And think about how Tasha was. Yes. Get money. you the best yes. drug. You know, like she loved that life. That's her thing. Let me jump in here real quick and just share a couple of my notes. I, I I realized that my last loving, committed, romantic relationship was over when I no longer trusted that person to play Go Fish with anymore. Because I realized they had been cheating at Go Fish. And I was like, God damn, you cheating at Go Fish? It's over. I can't do this no more. There's nothing to do. I have a hard time being in the room with people I can't trust. It gives me the shivers. I've been in the room. I had a, a, a memory recently of a dinner I went to back in the day um, with my homegirl. And there was a girl in the room who stole from me right across from the damn table. And I had this real cool conversation with her. It was like, come on, I don't want to blow this shit up. Just give me back my shit. Like, I know you got it. You know, and, and I had a, a, a nice, quiet conversation with another gentleman in the room and was like, I really don't want to blow this shit up, but that's my shit. And she gave it back. And I was like, why do you, why would you sit here across from somebody and steal from them? I have a hard time. I, I, I understand how social circles work, um, where there's a lot of people who hang out with each other who don't necessarily really like or trust or love each other but they hang out with each other i just have never gotten with that concept i literally only want to spend space with people i can trust you feel me <laughs> just something about it um and then she talked about tasha from power now i'll be honest with you and i'm sure i'm not alone i have no idea about that character i've never seen that show it i, I it doesn't relate to me from from what i've understood it was a story about um i don't even know it i don't know it never grabbed me um it, it just didn't seem to be like it seemed to be a story about low life people with a lot of money like that's what i grabbed from it like it, it it could have been shot excuse me in any neighborhood in atlanta or chicago um maybe uh a jackson mississippi or birmingham alabama you know miami it seemed like low life black people who made a lot of money and I think, <clears throat> okay, now I understand why I never watched the show. And this kind of goes back to my 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 um, conditioning coming up. I don't know if it was good or bad, but this is what it was. Uh, my parents had a passion um, of making sure that the images we saw of people that looked like us glorified the right thing. So my parents didn't allow my brother and I to watch certain entertainment i mean aside from like beavis and butthead and the simpsons which we weren't allowed to watch we also weren't allowed to watch um the movie juice um we weren't allowed to watch um uh what's another one boys in the hood um those movies that glorify drug culture gang culture low life situations it was important to my parents that what they put in front of us that looked like us looked like what we wanted to look like. So maybe that's why I don't watch a lot of movies because it doesn't, I didn't watch Empire. I've never seen an episode. Um, when I catch wind that these are shows that are um, celebrating the things that have destroyed black culture, black people, black neighborhoods, black families, black politics, black businesses, um, in America, it just doesn't, I don't care how well they dress or what the music sounds like in the background or what stars are in it, you know, I don't really relate to Mary J. Blige. I, I mean, she and I didn't grow up the same. We didn't spend our twenties doing the same thing. Um, my only, con my only real connection to her was 
we had the same nail tech when she whenever she came to my hometown to do a show but she was always drunk and she was always high and that was way back in the day um but that was the same kind of lifestyle that this show glorified from what I understood and so it didn't relate to me in a way that made me want to watch it um so maybe that's why I don't know about Tasha and power but from what I understand that is a show that glorifies street life um low life hustle uh grimy dangerous not something you want to write in a book and tell everybody you do for a living. And if that's the lifestyle, the essence, the energy that Tiffany Henyard in her mind is fascinated about, then you understand why she uses words like snitch when she describes her podcast being taken down or people telling her that the the trustees <clears throat> excuse me the trustees stopped trusting her early on it says a lot about the way she moves if if she's fashioning her political career after i don't know what is who is Tasha I don't know nothing about the woman, the character. I don't know anything about the character. I know that a, a typical ghetto black name was used. So I can put a picture in my head of a girl who probably was raised around a lot of trauma, um, got on with a drug dealer, and became a trap queen. I'm guessing just because they used the name Tasha. I've never seen the show. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. Because, um, you know... Typical, stereotypical black American names aren't used in a television show unless they are uh, glorifying stereotypical ghetto culture. We know that, right? Um, that's just a fact. So I don't know. I don't know. I think that's crazy if that's what this woman is trying to be. I just hope it all ends like set it off. That's the one movie I did see. Um when I, when I, my parents didn't let me see set it off either, but when I went to college, um, for Christmas, my brother got me the movie and the soundtrack. So he, he would always, he was a little older than me. So he would always slip me a CD or a song or something <laughs> I wasn't supposed to hear. So I, I definitely want this, um, this whole situation with Tiffany Henyard. I would love to see her die like Cleo. Is it true that the residents can't use that ice rink that she brags about? The ice rink has never been used for anything other than an event for Tiffany. Someone I see in the comments asking why did the residents vote for her. Let me address that. I have to address this on your show. Got it. People, the residents did not vote for Tiffany. So let me explain this whole 82%, 82%. Let me break it down again. Because even when I saw the trustees video come out, I'm like, it's one little piece that I needed you guys to hear. Okay. So you have a general election, right? You got a, you got a primary and you got a general election, right? In that primary election, she won 82% because the current mayor, was not a you know he didn't do what he needed to do and then he already yeah look at it like this he was already not gonna make it right he already had four uh, approval numbers and then I think I want to say we have to pull the numbers up on the Cook County um, Board of Elections but I want to say the other guy wasn't a resident so he wasn't gonna make it right and then oh no no he was on there and then Andrew Holmes where his residency Tiffany is the one who challenged it came into play so she won that right she was supposed to. She won it, but she won like by the hair of the chinny chin chin. So then she went and assembled a dream team. Now, if you look at the numbers of the dream team, she got the lowest numbers out of everyone. Jason House, if that was the mayoral election, Jason House, who had 1,400 votes, Tiffany only had 1,000. She won on a technicality. So... She says 82%. You got to also consider the fact it was COVID. Seniors were not, the majority of the voters in Dalton, they're not coming outside. Remember, it was so many 
seniors that stayed in the house because they was afraid to come outside because of COVID. So now you, you're expecting seniors to come outside and vote. They're not going to do that. And you add the fact that that was a February election. So it's cold outside, right. which is generally always a lower voter turnout. So and then she had her ticket. Kiana beat her. Jason beat her. Brittany beat her. Kevin Bowens beat her. She had the lowest out of all the numbers. So the people really did not vote for her like people think she did. Mm. She was just the only one left on the ballot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes sense when you put it that way. Okay. So, yeah. okay. That definitely makes more sense. Can, can I ask, can, can you speak on possibly how long she's known Roland Martin? She didn't know Roland Martin. She don't? So, no, she don't know Roland Martin. What happened with Roland Martin is Roland Martin, um, okay, she had a, she has a publicist. So the, she, has a, she has two publicists. She has a political publicist and she has a reality star publicist, right? Her reality star publicist thought it was a great idea to put her on a press run with people who would softball questions because she knows that Tiffany is not a strong interviewer. So what better place than to do than the center to New York and give her the, you know, the interviews. Now, what- I'm going in, to interrupt her for one second to say a thought before I forget. Uh, <laughs> um, Tiffany Henry mentioned during a Thornton Township meeting very recently that she was trying to get people or get, you know, companies to pick up her podcast and nobody would pick it up. Well, that's because it's stupid. Stupid. Happen. Was Roland Martin, how the, the publicist had a relationship with Roland Martin. So the publicist, ABC, called Roland Martin, listen, I can get you, I can get you this interview, but, you know, Tiffany has a, a pattern of saying you only can ask her pre-approved questions. Now, that's not uncommon. You know, sometimes, you know, like right. if you were interviewing Barack, if you were interviewing someone like that, right. usually what they do is you have to turn in pre-approved questions. So that was what how it went down. Roland Martin could not ask her the questions he wanted. Otherwise, she wouldn't have granted him the interview. Now, things that people don't know was she tried to get this same interview with Charlemagne, who said, I'm going to ask you what the, you know, what I want. And if you can't, no deal. If you can't answer the question, he put his integrity, which I thought he would have done it. But Charlemagne said no. Ooh. But remember, Angela Yee. She gone. Angela, she she going, you know, because she need number. Yep, she's she thirsty. Knew. She took the interview. Exactly. Exactly. So that's what happened. But no, to Roland's defense, and I had a conversation with him, so I can honestly confirm this. He, he was doing a solid pre-approved questions, and then, you know, I, but where he, where he threw the curveball at, I have the relationship with Roland Martin. Why would you go at Jason House like that? I was the one who secured that interview for Jason. And I wasn't okay with that. But guess what? I ended up, I'm the one, just so Tiffany, I know she's watching. I sent him the leak, the, the clip that showed her lying. <laughs> and I remember when you said you were going to do that. I remember you said you were going to do it and you did it. That's when I started paying yep. attention. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I hit him right on his phone and gave him that clip. Someone <laughs> asked who, who are the, who are the taxpayers? The, are the taxpayers? Yes, the taxpayers are paying for two public relation firms. And get this, there are two six-figure public relation firms. So the ta- the taxpayers are paying about two hundred thousand a year in public relations. Because I know when everyone saw the um, sixty thousand or something like that for the one cornerstone, everyone's talking about cornerstone. Right. But that's sixty thousand because it took them five months to get paid. They're charging about ten to fifteen grand a month. Dang. It's, I mean, public public relations. I'm just saying, we do get paid like attorney. Yeah, but the, but who do. she using ain't that good, are they? No, it's the same because she. I'm pretty. I'm confident that who she's using is good. She but just don't listen. Here's the fact: you don't listen. She didn't listen to me. <laughs> Anyone who knows can confirm. <laughs> Tiffany and I clashed a lot. My husband is sitting here. He can tell you Tiffany and I clashed a lot because Tiffany does not listen to listen to constructive feedback. And when the truth is, I'm quite generally 
looking to um, save your reputation, keep you out of trouble. Because if I have to do crisis management, you're going to have to pay me more. That's another position. Yep. <laughs> Yep. I, I'm, I'll get you out of here on this one. If you can answer this, is there any way possible you can speak on what happened after the adjourning of the meeting that happened on yeah, I, Monday? I, I can speak on. All right. And um, I got a good feeling the young lady is on your chat, but I'm going to tell you this is what happened. The young lady walked in and I she had on a mask, she had on a hat, so they did not um, notice her. And she stood up there with the media <laughs> the entire time. So when all of the media turned and left, she walked and sat down. Because remember, they said, if you're going to leave, leave. Or if you're going to stay, have a seat. She sat down. So Tiffany goes, talk her a little gibberish, looking at contact with the media, you know, hear my cry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm going to sit up there and see my seat Baby girl, pull that mask down. <laughs> <laughs> Game over. Oh, she pulled that mask down on her, hit her with that yeah, yeah. And um, Tiffany got up and she ran. So if you go back and you listen to the, the last two minutes of the video, you hear her tell a key, hurry up, hurry up, right? <laughs> Because I stand on I stand on what I'm saying. That girl is not to be played with. Wait until she's ready to come forward. And I'm and I'm a, I want to clear this up for her as well. People always say, "Why did it take so long for her to come out?" It was not her. People don't understand. She's been in the process of going through interviews, vetting this information. It's a process. Think. I mean, we can also say, why hasn't Tiffany been caught up by the, you know, Fed yet? It's a process. Between the prayer and the promise is the process. So you have to look at it like this. You think that this is a case this big. They're the, from Illinois to Las Vegas, these people are not going to miss. But I will tell you this. From what I know and from what I've witnessed, there's undeniable proof that this happened, but it's going to take a while for it to come out. So we just ask, just give give everybody some grace on that. Just give her some grace. That's all I can say. And, and the truth is going to come out. Whatever that looks like, I mean, there's, they're not going to get around that. It's, it's un, undeniable proof. I'll say that. I appreciate you, Dr. Cloud. Any any last parting words you'd like to say to all of LNC before you get out of here? Yeah, I think what you're doing is awesome. I, I appreciate you uh, putting the word out. I I I told um I told Miss Val that I gave you the video. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. I'll be there this weekend. My my offer's still on the table. I'm so serious. <laughs> Hopefully, you should come Monday. You see, you know, a lot okay. of things have changed. It looks like um, it's going to be a quite interesting board meeting on Monday. I'll be with there. With all the changes coming up. And a lot of people, that's the last thing, too. A lot of people are, you know, um, it's mixed reviews on the possibility of um, former mayor Lori Lightfoot coming in to do the investigation. I also say give her some grace as well because a lot of people don't understand. For one, she's non-biased. And for two, she's a federal prosecutor. So that means if she sees something, she has the unique ability to push that red button, that red button mm. that we don't have. Okay. Okay. And, um, yeah, so that that's that. And, you, you know, I appreciate, like, you, you vet stories. I love that you... You go the, you know, you go the extra mile to, you know, find out what's what. And your delivery is amazing. Keep up the great work. I, I appreciate it, Dr. Cloud. Uh, so, uh, send all my warm regards to your husband. And um, you guys have a great dinner. And uh, I hope to hear from you again very soon, Dr. Cloud. You got me. So whenever you need me, I, I'll definitely pop in. Sounds good. Say less. Everybody, Dr. Thanks. Nikita Cloud.
That was an awesome interview. I was that was actually only my second time watching it when I just watched it with you guys. It was so full of stuff, so full of information. Um, but before we leave, I do want to go right back to that Village Adult video real quick, and I want us to just take a look at those last couple minutes before um, those last couple minutes again. Uh, now that all this has been put together, so let's run over there. Come on, YouTube. YouTube, don't be obeying my fingers. Hold on. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see what we are here. I actually want to go to where she started talking her shit. Just so we can see the confidence and the bullshit. Um... Cause I, I thought see the, the whole time and... Keith knew what was going on, but apparently he didn't know either. I don't want to go back too far, cause Lord knows she talked for a minute. Excuse me. Well, let me just go back to the beginning of her talking, cause this may be the last time we hear from her. I'm gonna clear out. Let's go. Let's go back to this moment here. General announcements. Do anybody have any general announcements? Thank um, you, guys. Yes, All right, go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I hear a lot of the outrage, and I think a lot of it is just around um, having a space that can accommodate. And I'm concerned also that there may be some violations of the Open Meetings Act because we need to have a space when we know that there is uh, this many people. Um, as such, I'm going to make a motion that we postpone this meeting and continue the agenda to Monday, April 8th, a week from today at 6.30 Dalton Park District 14700 Evers. So that is my motion. Um, trustee, second. We are not postponing a meeting. We are Just here. And basically, we have two items on the agenda. So we can basically continue with our meeting and get through the two items that's on the meeting. So my advice to the board is we are already here. Let's handle the business and not let the business handle you guys. We're not having no meeting at no Hi. Dalton Park District. So I'm just That's making that crystal ground. clear. Clerk, what are you doing? You're out of order. You're out of order. Did I call the road? Did I say call the road? I'm still speaking. You're out of order, Clerk Key. You're out of order, Clerk Key. Like, stop. Y'all out of order. Everybody want to run stuff. Y'all don't run this house over here. Stop, please. So, as I was stating, we need to continue with the business. We are here. People came to a meeting to hear what we have been doing in our village. The department heads, the lawyer, everyone's here. So, I'm asking for you guys to sit here and to deal with what's going on. Trustee Tammy And that's the problem. That we have not wondered why we have dysfunction. This is the reason. So, if y'all walk out, y'all walk out. We got business to handle. Okay. Now. All right. So you know, go ahead. Go ahead. Handle your business, and we gonna handle ours. All right. That officer mainly just walked around in circles all night. <laughs> Literally. And you see Lacey caught himself sending them into harm's way. It was a party outside waiting for them. Not yet, baby. I'm almost done, okay? Thank you, sweet face. <laughs> Trustee Rouse, I thought y'all was leaving. 
Y'all should come back, sit down, and handle the business, and let's finish to do what we came here to do, which is go through our agenda, but y'all give interviews. Can y'all all exit, please? Thank you. Y'all don't want to handle the business here? Hey. Officers, clear the room. The media has to step out also. Clear the room. Business. Everybody, they can step outside. Everybody. No, just the, the people here, they're fine. Everybody oh, the else, the media included, here has to clear the room. The people we planted here are okay. Testing, testing. If you are saying, please do so. If you're not, please exit so we can finish our meeting so you can hear from us as a body of what we do here in our village. This is a board meeting about business, not chaos, not confusion, not disruptions. That is not what we represent here in the village of Dalton. So for those that come for the show, go outside. Because the showing is not in here. We're talking about what we've done as a community. So please, if you're going to leave, exit, and please shut the door so we can conclude our business here. And apparently, this is when the young lady came and sat down. Kim said, this is the buffoonery. All right, James, y'all ready? Not the Nino right, Brown, not the Rihanna. This is buffoonery. Okay, Kim. All right, James, ready? Okay, right, we're going to give people time to clear out. Except the people they planned it to be there. Who was that that just came from the back and covered their face? That was weird. And that little kaleidoscope, right. Heidi um, kaleidoscope. I want to thank everybody for staying that actually came here to hear what we do um, in the village of Dalton. As you just saw, is chaos amongst our four trustees. They didn't come here to handle the business. They came here to do a political theater stunt, which you just saw. We didn't get through any business as it relates to a scheduled board meeting here in our village, which we're supposed to do. But yeah, everybody cry about meetings and we should have more. Why well, have more meetings when it's going to just be chaotic like this? Our job is to make sure we take care of the business and not allow the business to handle us, which you just saw before you. It's a shame that every time it's time to really take care of things, such as making sure payroll is paid. Because guess what? They didn't put on paying the police, the public works, making sure your concrete is down. They did not vote on none of that. But this is the things that I face as a mayor here in the village of Dalton. And it's sad because you're seeing it with your own two eyes. I can't make this up. Y'all see that people walk out at every single board meeting. You see when we had the other board meeting, they walked out when it was a $33 million um, issue on the table where we supposed to win a closed session. We would have made sure we was in a better predicament if they would have stayed and made sure they took care of the business. But yet, the media don't report that. It's good to see the media out here, um, but I wish you guys would come for the positive things and not the chaos and not the media show, because that's all this is. I get it. We're clickbait. We're hot right now, and I get it. This is what sells papers. But I wish you guys would have came to our Easter event that we had on, what was that, Saturday? Wait a minute. 
Did she just say the media didn't report that the trustees walked out of a meeting where they ended up missing out on the opportunity for a $33 million lawsuit settlement and they ended up having to go to full litigation and she was mad that the media didn't report that. But they always want to report the negative stuff and not the positive stuff like the Easter egg hunt. Well, if they always want to report the negative stuff, wouldn't they have reported on that too? That walkout with, with the $33 million settlement? No, because that was necessary. You are unnecessary. You can't tell the media what to report on. Get over 500 kids out there running. happy, running around, giving away baskets. It was amazing. But you should want the good stories just like you want the bad stories. But it's sad that people tell you false information with no facts and y'all run and y'all write it. Y'all know y'all can destroy people's lives by just writing things that's not true. And then later, that person has to sit there and try to fix what you guys have broken because y'all have a national platform. So this is my outreach to the media, which I said it several times. Please, please do your research. You guys call yourself journalism. Please research the stuff before y'all put things on your national platform and hurt people that should not be uh, political damage because y'all want to make a story for clickbait. That's all right. And I get it. People sell their souls. I get it. You want to be the hottest thing right now. I get it. You guys go and y'all get awards for who got the best story. I get it. But please stop destroying people's lives and tell the truth, please. And then if you follow me, y'all should have paid attention to the Tiffany Henry on the Moo podcast. All the things that y'all posted, which was all fake and false, I showed y'all the truth. Y'all get the same footage y'all had, but none of y'all played it. Y'all had to make it like we was lying, like I was lying. But you guys was telling lies, and that's not cool. So that is my information to you guys. So I don't know how y'all going to spin this meeting or say whatever. Okay, that's her message to the media, so let me respond to it. Let me start with this. If you watch the video that Go Political made, um, I think it was the most recent video about the Dalton trustees and the stuff that's going on in Dalton, he mentioned a situation he came into as a child where this little boy kept hitting him in the back of the head and then would gaslight him through anger. You know, that R. Kelly, y'all killing me, I'm fighting for my life type shit. Um, would gaslight him into thinking it wasn't him that was hitting him, but Carlton knew the boy was hitting the back of his head. That's what you see happening here. Tiffany here, you got the nerve. To get mad at the media for showing what she puts on the air. Now, if the media had come to the um, Easter egg hunt, it would have been because your PR people invited them. You got two PR teams. That's what we just learned. One for the reality show flop and one for the political career that's flopping right before our eyes like a dead fucking fish. And it's musty. Listen, you got two PR teams. How come nobody sent out a, a press release on Friday or Thursday or Wednesday? How come there were no ads on WGN or the radio or anywhere about the Easter egg hunt? That's your PR team's fault that the news wasn't there. And if they were there, you so damn ignorant, you don't even realize that if they were there on Saturday, they would have seen Chief Lacey. Um, violating one, two, three people's civil rights, including a child, that he made cry. Continue, uh, ugly. But show the facts. All the trustees walked out because they couldn't have their way. And that's not how government works. Government works like this. Good, bad, or indifferent, we work together. We put on a good collect the front for the public and we fight in the back but yet people came here for a stunt a show because all y'all came out i don't never see y'all come out for nothing positive like this how y'all came out like this come out to the next thing that we have just like y'all out here for the bad press which people won't clickbait so with that being said we're gonna get through what have i been doing as your mayor of I the village of dawson and thank you residents for always supporting me loving on me and encouraging me and keeping me in your prayers because i need that because as you can see i'm under attack so thank you she's literally talking to three people who she planted in the room and one person she doesn't know is there but we'll find out very soon 
I did a more thorough breakdown of this uh, Coke rant because the Coke hit. I mean, it was right about time for the Coke to hit. Um, I did a thorough breakdown of this, um, a better breakdown of this rant um, in another video. Um, I think it was called Guess Who Made the Mayor Run? Uh, another breakdown episode, but um, I don't want to. I don't want to go to the nitty gritty of this one just because I already have. But um, let's continue. First, uh, I know we was going to entertain a couple issues. The media wrote about Plablos who got shut down in our village for multiple shootings. Multiple. Did she say Plablos? Plablos. Plot blows. That's what she said. I'm going to let y'all listen to it on your own because we don't have much further to go. Fights. But yet again, this is what I mean about you guys not doing no research. Y'all just let that man go on the news and tell those lies. I'm going to let Chief Lacey speak to that because we shut them down. Yes, we shut them down here in the village. And then guess what? When they opened back up, they had another shoot. Another shoot. Did y'all come and write that? And all I'm saying to y'all is the fight that we in, y'all don't live here. You go off a hearsay, what somebody told you, and don't fact check it. Y'all call me when a shooting happened, but y'all don't call me when something positive going on in the community. Come on, media, let's build a relationship and stop letting people around us dictate what our relationship is. This is my olive branch to you, and I'm going to keep saying it. Please fact check before you write about something that you know nothing about. because you in Damn, she pimp talking the media. Come on, media. Let's build our own relationship, baby. Don't worry about what they say out there. Don't worry, baby. I'm the one for you. I love you. And it ain't nothing you could do about it. In the middle of our political fight, as you can see. We didn't pay nobody today. No bills got approved. How do we fix the light poles on people's blocks that they're crying about? Because the way y'all got it, people want to get paid first before they come out and do work for us. Wait a minute. I didn't mention, I didn't talk about this before, so I'm going to talk about it now. She said, how do we fix the light poles on people's blocks they've been complaining about? Ma'am, these people have been complaining about these light poles for like the last three or four years. Even before you became mayor, you came into the mayorship with Dalton looking like shit. And it still does. So today's uh, early adjournment of the meeting is not going to affect the ability of people having lights. Because it wasn't. There's no plan for that anyway. What you're more concerned about is that your friends who are you know, supplying the drugs to Dalton, those little bills you're able to pass through right now before the trustees figure out what's going on aren't going to be paid. And y'all owe some big people some money. That's bad. We a whole village, a whole municipality. A whole and we can't get things done because of all of this negativity on our village. And what hardens my, I won't say hard my heart, Harden, what yeah, hurts my heart is when uh, you got board members hurting their time, board members that's in government like me that don't care about where we're going to go in the next six months, year, two years. Because at the end of the day, when the smoke clear, we still got to live here. What's we smoke? still got to get along. We still got to move forward no matter what. And we have to fi fix the chaos and the, the stuff that you left behind, guys, by just writing negative stories. That's not right. I don't see it. So the media writing negative stories is what has the, de the village in a $7 million deficit. The media writing these stories is what has um, these businesses shut down because they won't continue to contribute to Tiffany's Henyard's campaign. The media writing negative stories is what has Andrew Holmes hiding in the basement from his victim who happens to be sitting right in the audience right before Tiffany Henyard right now. And she'll realize that in five, four. I'm doing that in them upper areas like how y'all be dragging us over here. I don't see y'all. But yet us every day, all day, y'all got us on your station. That's not cool. So I'm going to pass the mic to Chief Lacey. He's going to talk to you about the nightclubs and all the issues we've been having in our town. So before y'all wrote them stories, you should have came and got real interviews from the people that got the real facts. Not people that just accusing and lying on people that's going to end up in lawsuits. And watch what you say, residents and other people that just go on the news lying on people. That's defamation of character. But y'all don't see that. Y'all just keep going with it just because it's traction for your network. That's not cool. All right, Chief Lacey, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I want to comment on uh, a few things that uh, 
that has, has been developed in the uh, in the town. Um, first, I want to read off that the um, Don Police Department wrote 613 parking citations, 388 uh, state citations, 4,457 uh, red lights. We had six felonies, 93 misdemeanors. Um, our auto theft is down. We are also moving in the direction of a tactical unit. Really. But unfortunately, I don't think that this is going to uh, get to the people to see because I see the media uh, basically closing up. But in reference to Pablo's, we closed Pablo's probably multiple times. And what ended up happening is that with the state, they had an appeal. Well, with the appeal that they had, they were able to open up again. Right after they opened up, they had another shooting. Uh, and unfortunately, nobody covered that. Uh, I opened my door to the media if they want to talk. But obviously, I don't think that's the case. I'm very proud of the Dalton Police Department. We're moving in the right direction in what we're going to do. Officers, we're going we're gonna to shut it down. Ladies and gentlemen, for right now, for safety reasons, we are shutting the meeting down. And there you have it, the full scope of what happened on Monday night, <laughs> so far, as far as we know. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, um, this thing is deeper and deeper, and based on what Dr. Nikki said on Monday, it's supposed to be a really, really good meeting. I'll definitely be tuning in. Um, and I will definitely be giving the breakdown um, as I have it available to you. For now, that's... Oh, and do you see it's 12.22 p.m.? Oh, that's all I got. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Take your time, girl. Yeah, you want to do it again? No, you do it first. Me do first, okay. <laughs> Take your breath, ready? <sighs> okay. That's all I got. Did you forget? Ain't got no more. You better say. <laughs> I holler. <laughs>